Well, hey guys, what's up? Krishnan here. Today, I would like to tie for you a, where is it? Goddard Caddis. Now, this one's kind of been crushed, but, put my bobbin down. Um, so, here it is. It is a very high float, very high float, it is, this fly has a very high float ability. Kind of didn't, this steer here is kind of sparse though, but very high float ability. As you can see, as you know, or as you hopefully know, deer hair is very floatable because it's hollow, unlike other hair as well. I suppose elk is floatable as well, so yeah. So the thread I will be using, it doesn't really matter, but I would actually go with like a rusty brown ish color, but I'm just going to use black uni thread and 8 aught. So then we will be using red neck hackle as well as a quail from it as well. The hook I'm using is a Umcor size 12 standard dry fly hook. You can also tie this in size 14 as well, that works. And then I'd be using deer body hair. Alright, so after you adjust the tension, on this thread, which I completely forgot to do. As you can see, I'm just pulling it open. There we go. Oh yeah, it's very good. It might not be good for a spinning gear here, but I completely forgot. Um, we're going to start, instead of at the very base, the top of the hook, behind the eye, you are going to want to start right at the middle of the hook. And work your way down from there. And break it off there. Eat out uni thread. It's very versatile and also very easy to break. So, yeah. So, we're going to take our deer body here. This is from Wasp Waspy Wopsy 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 Waspy Wopsy Wopsy Waspy Wopsy Wopsy <laughs> And we're going to take a clump about eh, we'll say about half a pencil's thickness. It's not half a pencil's thickness. You're half to three quarters of a pencil's thickness, depending on what size hook you're using. So, but really, you just kind of have to feel it out for yourself. If you want like a sparser, if you want like a sparser pattern or a more floatable pattern, yeah. Now you're just going to pick out the deer, all the fuzzies and shorts. Easy way of doing that, taking your bodkin and just like running it through and then it just pulls out all of them. There's fuzzies, shorties, all that stuff. Now what I want to do, just to make things a bit easier, I'm going to stack it. But I'm not going to stack the tips, I'm going to stack the ends. The cut ends. I just put that in the stacker. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that. There it is. Just kind of bang on your table, desk, or something, whatever, a few times. Then, once you just the camera back. Oh uh, yeah, the teacher says my secret says Canada if you haven't noticed. Hmm, I went to Canada a long time ago. Huh. Stop talking about Canada. Alright, so now now we are going to form a clump take that little pick that out of the air so that it reaches so that the tips I gotta stack this again. Or you could cut it off square, but 
I don't really want to waste my deer here because Wopsy does not make very large strips. And I got it in Vermont, so Vermont is a very long day. And my hair stack is just kind of fell apart in the middle of the stack. Hmm, it's raining outside. It's weird. Also, I'm very sorry that, um, I remember last video I said that I would put out a new video on Monday, but I do not. I am a failure. I am so sorry. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a failure. I'm amazing. I'm just kidding. I should probably... We'll go back to the fly. Okay. So, have that very nicely stacked. So here... We are going to be doing is putting the clump until it reaches just right at the eye. Just right at the eye. Then we'll make two loose collecting wraps, and then we're going to tighten down so that it's flared around the hook. We're still holding back of the deer. Make a few more wraps. Very nice tight wraps. Now, I don't have any packing material, thing to pack it with, or, like, I don't have a, a half hitch tool, I just do a manual half hitch, like, ah, here, do manual half hitch, I just do that for a half hitch, so, I don't have any half hitch tools, so I don't, but for packing, ow, you have, you should probably get, like, even a straw or something. I've heard some people use like crazy straws from like you know how the kids, the little kids like those straws that are like clear, they're like green, clear greenish or something, and then they're like all curly and stuff. So that's what people use to pack it down. All right. So now what we're going to do? I'm not sure if you can. Act, well, here, I want you to notice if you can see it, but. You can see, uh, you can't really see, never mind. But if you could see, you will notice that you can see where the thread is. Where we started out on our thread base. So now what we're going to do is take that clump of deer hair. And we are going to cut it off. So that's... We'll say a little bit more than the shank of the length of the shank of the hook shank 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 shank. All right, so bring your thread thread forward and make sure you actually can hold on to all those. So then we're going next. This clump we're going to spin actually. So two loose collecting wraps. Once you have those, one more. Then let go and then tighten down and spin and then. Make turns with it, and as you can see, the deer hair was spun around the hook shank. And then, if it didn't, you can just kind of, while you're packing it, just help it along a bit. Okay, I'm shortening this thread. So anyways, I am actually kind of excited for um, this weekend because I will be going, either I am going down to Connecticut to film, a, if I'm, I might be going down to Connecticut, right? And um, so if I am, then I will be um, filming a fly fishing video there about like pan fish and stuff. Um, but... I'm just meeting a friend there, but if my friend does come up here, I'm not sure. Uh, stuff. I might do it, I don't know. But there's a great lake up where I live. Got a ton of, it's got panfish, trout too. I've never caught a trout on a fly, sadly. I've caught many panfish. 
Yeah. Panfish don't really count, do they? That's what you guys should leave in the comments. Panfish, do they count? Alright? If you can, do that. And if you can't, then how about this? Leave a like if panfish do count. And leave a er, don't leave a dislike. Just don't do anything if panfish don't. If you can. Alright. Alright, bye bye. I'm tired. Okay. So anyways, we finished with the deer hair body. Now we're just going to dam it up with our thread. So now, just to make sure that I don't lose the thread while I'm cutting, while I'm trimming, I'm going to make a whip finish. One, two, three, four, five. Turn whip finish. Break that off. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to trim off the thread. So pick out all the fibers for bodkin. Okay. So, ooh, I have some under. Ooh, I just made a mess on the floor. I'm gonna have to clean it up now. Ridiculous. That's what you guys should do. So, I sadly do not have a rotary vise. Ooh, you can feel the light. If you do that, you can just feel how light this fly is. Okay, look at it. It's light. Oops. Dropped it. Don't drop your flies, kids. Or adults or people watching this video. <laughs> okay. So I prefer to grab hold of the tail just so I don't cut it. So then what you want to do is square off the sides. front, side, and bottom, just square it off. Then, once you have that, just about square it off. You want to make a cone shape, and someone's driving. Oh, and I also have an announcement to make. Um, school year is just about to start soon. Um, it's August, if you guys are watching this in the future. But if you're not, if you're watching this in the present. Um, oops. So then I will not probably I will have a very hard time putting out videos because I would like to get my grades very nice, like normal. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna make a pretty much we're gonna make a cone shape here. So. Nice country, and then at the very end, after we put on the hackle and stuff, we'll do the final trimming. Here, so if you have a rotary vise, you guys are lucky. If you do, um, then you can just kind of keep the fly in the vise and just rotate the vise. But I do not. All right, so we are going to reattach our thread. Oh, it's deer hair. Thread. Reattach our thread. There we go. So now we are going to t pick out, pick through your um, hackles and find a nice long one with webby fibers on it. One that you probably would not be using for a fly, but it's nice and long. So then we're going to strip off those fibers until we get the quill. The quill, if you do not know, if you need a fly tying, quill is the part of the hackle that keeps all the feathers together. Or the, um, it's the part of the feather that all the little barbels are mounted onto. So then, Form a loop 
Alright, let me actually finish taking off all these barbels. That's good enough, okay. So, these are the two ant- these will, after we are done with this, these will be the two antennae for antennae. Antennae? Antennae or antennae? I don't know. So anyways, we're going to be tying this up on, and then tie, start from where the deer hair body, deer hair body is, and then work our way up with a nice, very smooth foundation for when we are going to be ha wrapping our hackle. Okay, so there we go. Now this just seems very. N now um, I know some people. I've seen some people tie these flies, and they're using like nylon strips, little nylon strips of um stuff, nylon, yeah, for these antennae. But I remember seeing a caddis on the water a few weeks ago, and it looked exactly like this fly. It was like unbelievable. And I, then I, like, taking a closer look at it, well, before it flew off, I realized that with the quill, it looks much more natural, because it has, like, the little bars. You can't see it here, because my camera's horrible. You know, I'm going to turn the light on. There we go. It's a little more illuminated. Sorry. Um, but you can kind of see how, like, there's little bars of red and white and stuff. Alright, so now, find your hackle, found it, now pick through the hackle, find a nice long feather, ah, this is perfect right here, it's almost a badger hackle, look at that, can't really see here, but it almost looks badger colored, there's three different types of hackle colors, there's um, Badger, grizzly, and solid. So solid is just a solid color, as yeah. And bad and grizzly um, is alternating black bars from here. So like black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, or it could be any other color. But then badger, if it's black and white at least, badger the outer parts will be white. But right near the quill, it will be black. Okay. Strip off these fibers. Alright. So. Now we are going to tie the quill in at the gear here body. And then work our way down in a nice smooth foundation and then take that little tag off snip it close there we go now work our way back now what we're going to do take off some of the feathers from the top Double it over the tip hackle, and then tie it in this way. And tie it in. Remember that nice smooth foundation so the hackle wraps properly. All right, so now that's tied in. Well, this video is long. Dang, I am so sorry. Wrap the hackle back. until you reach the deer hair body. So then, wrap, wrap, snap before. So now you have a problem. How are you gonna get this back up to the eye? So what you're gonna do, twist your bobbin counterclockwise so that the thread balls up in cords. That's at its thinnest diameter. Now you're going to make wraps through the hackles 
as tightly as possible so you don't trap any flyways. So once you get there, make one or two wraps behind the eye. Oh, this is a long video! I don't know why this is a very easy fly to tie. Once you, like, understand that. Make four or five turn with finish. Tighten and break. I'm gonna redo this video, maybe. Well, if you're seeing this video, you will know that I did not redo this video. Which I am tired and I don't want to, so. You know what? I'll remake it into a nice quick video. Alright, so now we're going to be doing the final trimming of the deer here. So make a angular cut down the back of the deer hair. Then where the end, make a reverse angle cut up. And then once you have that, snip the quill in half so you get two antennae. And there you have it. Goddard caddis. Looks exactly like a caddis. You can skitter along the water because it's high floatability and it's just amazing. It's hard to tie at first. So take your time. Yeah. I am so sorry if this video is long and thank you so much for watching the entire video if you are seeing this. <laughs> okay. Alright. Bye bye now. Bye bye. I said bye-bye.